Welcome to a new series. Remember how I showed off my runner, an amazing tool which I call the terminal, whether or not it's semantically that, but that is only the second most useful thing that I've created. The most useful one is my win class. It used to not be a class, and matter of fact, I was using it like more than a year ago came up with the idea and as time went on i made a better and better way to structure all of this so now it's a class okay what does it actually do you probably saw in my previous videos how i jump between windows in a seemingly magical way like what am i doing right now how am i doing this I'm not using my mouse, uh, I'm using some hotkey. Well, exactly. So currently, VS Code is active. I'm gonna spoil you that the hotkey is Alt-A. I press Alt-A, now it's not active. I press Alt-A again, now it's active. Let's close it for a bit. And now press Alt-A again. So, let me reiterate. The VS Code window does not exist. I press Alt-A, it runs VS Code, and now it's active again. And then it made the font bigger, because this is apparently my default. My default. So, what's happening here? Essentially, I set a bunch of things, which are here, and use various HK built-in Windows operating functions. So, if the window of VS Code doesn't exist, it runs that window. If it does exist and it's active, it minimizes it. If it does exist but is not active, it activates it. And I have more hotkeys as well, one for Chrome, S, for Spotify, which works the same way, uh, Q for Discord, and so on and so on. Essentially, you can set a hotkey or whatever else, maybe something in the runner, which I do have, uh, that does something, something specific on the window. However, I don't always want to do this three-way thing. Uh, this is just for hotkeys, but usually what I want through, for example, a runner, say I want to uh, make sure OBS is active. If OBS is currently active, I don't want it to be, to be minimized. Essentially here, what I want is to make sure that it's active, whether or not the window exists. So there is a different function for that. Let's go step by step. First of all, I'll show off uh, the first thing that I was talking about. App. It looks really simple, doesn't it? This is because I'm using the advantage of classes. I can wrap uh, all of the code that would otherwise be here in abstractions which are readable and easy to change. So, if not min-max, or rather, if min-max, then, then we have done what we wanted to do. If not, then we run act. What does run act do? The second thing that I was talking about. It makes sure that the window is activated. So, if it doesn't exist, it runs it, and it activates it. Now you might say, well, hold on, why do you have a function for activate that's built in? That's because, well, you can ignore these parts, at least for the time being, uh, but this, yes, I can even activate, but say I have uh, a bunch of stuff happening in a function, so things happen right after 
the previous one. So I activate the window, but maybe there wasn't enough time to actually have that window be active. So we have to add win wait active. Uh, this though, I'll come back to later. It's an edge case that was actually quite useful. Coming back, what does run do? Well, if it doesn't exist, or rather, if the window exists, then cool, we ran it because it already exists. And then we run it. Once again, some more stuff. So you see a lot of this, which refers to the class instance, and then a bunch of variables in there. You saw them here. Usually, how you do kind of this kind of thing is just have a function which you provide the the parameters that you need. Say you need a uh, win title for a parameter, uh, then win text. But say you don't need the stack. Uh, or run options. So you pass those parameters. Cool, but this, the thing is I have a bunch of functions all of which use some or even many of the class variables which are actually called fields, turns out. I've been learning C sharp and uh, that's a new term, turns out uh, variables that are inside of a class are called fields. Coming back, there are a bunch of fields <laughs> that I'm using. So say uh, I want to use app. Okay, let's see, what do we actually need? Well, first of all, we need to pass parameters to min-max. Okay, we need win title and uh, this exception. Okay, easy enough. What do we need in minimize? Win title, great. So here, uh, we actually have to pass win title. Remember that. Uh, and then in win activate, we need win title, exception, and stack. So once again, we would have to provide win title, uh, exception, if I remember correctly, and stack. And as things go, the amount of parameters that we have to pass from the highest uh, function, so this is a high level function that calls a bunch of functions below it, we would have to need a lot of parameters that we may need to pass and then go here, pass everything here, and then uh, go here, pass everything here, and then from here we also pass basically, it's a mess that's really difficult to work with, and what you end up doing is, uh, well, it wasn't a class, it used to be this, which I know is wacky, I don't use that anymore, I'm sorry, uh, but say you do win app, and then you're like, okay, uh, win title, then what was it? I think exit title or exit path, whatever. And then you're like, okay, now I need the stack. So let's get to that parameter. What is this? I mean, what is this? This is just ridiculous. I am much better off creating an object and passing. So I'm passing win title, uh, let it be something. And then I need exit path. Uh, something uh, and now we can just say oh I need the stack and it's going to be this now I don't actually need to remember where are which parameters I don't need to take care of the uh, ordering now I just specify in words what parameter I'm setting to what better yet instead of uh, let's go back to uh, app, 
So by passing parameters from here to everything below and below and below, that's a lot of memory, I guess, wasted. Because every time uh, a parameter is passed down, it's actually copied onto the stack. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. When really it's one thing that I don't want changed and it's always going to be the same for every function is this <clears throat> in this class. So why am I wasting all of that uh, RAM and performance by passing all of this when instead, boom, that's an object that has uh, everything that I need. Like I already passed all of the possible parameters that I'm going to need for this uh, use case. So I do object, cool, now I have that object. And now I can do object, uh, say we run acted. We don't need to specify anything because we already did. Uh, and then object, say we minimize it. Boom, that's literally it. We don't have to uh, pass a bunch of stuff every single time. We just create an object and call our methods without having to worry about what we pass. Uh, and better yet, since it's all in this one place, if I say want to change the exit path, for example, I moved an application from one place to another, so to run that application, there's now a different path. Instead of having to track down every time I pass that parameter, well, I don't have to do that. Uh, I just change it here. Amazing. Uh, <clears throat> and naturally you can do this. So app boom. Oh, well, we wouldn't need to get an object that way. So we'll create the object, immediately call app. So it's essentially the same as just calling a function if you want it to. Or better yet, what if we uh, moved the declaration of that window object to somewhere else. Well, I have done exactly that. So VS Code, when object, boom. We don't even need to specify anything because we already did. I personally have a class for more or less every application that I use with auto hotkey and in that class I already define the window object that has everything that I need in using the window class. So now anytime I need to do anything with the window of VS Code I just call the, uh, the class uh, through the window object that it has and then say, let's minimize it. Boom, that's it. Very clean, no need to pass any parameters because once again, I already did. And once again, better yet, if I change anything, say I change the win title, for example, if you didn't know, you can change the title of the window. Uh, yeah, you can change the title of the VS Code window. So if I do that, the only thing that I have to change is here. Well, in my situation, it would be here because I have the exit title, win title and path here as well. I don't know. If you're interested in, in a video about app specific classes, comment down below. Uh, maybe that's interesting because I personally find it very, very nice and it increases maintainability in a large way. Coming back. So yeah, it's that simple. And let's go to my uh, hotkeys. 
it's actually quite manageable. I used to have long S lines up to like here that even wrapped to the next line providing parameters. And I have this kind of thing in multiple places. So I have my hotkeys on the keyboard, but I also have my hotkeys on the mouse. And I had to re-specify that for both of those occasions. Well, now I don't have to, because every time I need to use uh, the Windows object is just here. So it's cleaner that way. All right. I'm sure you now realize how actually nice this is. Uh, and let's go bit by bit to how it actually all works. First of all, the fields that you see right now, the fields, what you see here, are the defaults. If you just specify uh, a field with nothing, like I'm not even sure if that would work. Yeah, you get an error. Uh, you have to specify something. Basically, what will it be if you don't set it at all? So run option uh, is essentially how do we run the window? Should it be maximized or minimized? This is that. My default is max, obviously. And I can reset it to min when I want the window to open up minimized for this, for example. Uh, cool. So if you don't specify a win title, it just operates on the active window. Uh, anything else? Not really. And in win titles, you get the idea of what it expects. We'll come back to each one of those as we go through the functions. So, new. As I've shown previously, uh, the new method gets called when you create an instance of a class. So, what happens if I brackets? <laughs> I think is the best way to explain it. Yeah. So, <clears throat> first of all, we can just create an object without passing anything. Not sure how that would be useful, but we can. And uh, if we don't set that object, then we just create an instance. So this does give us an instance, but it's a useless one, more or less. You might get an idea that, oh, since win title is already A by default, so it operates on the active window, that means that uh, this actually has a use, because we could do object uh, like like minimize, for example, because we already have the win title, which is the active window. Well, not really, because there is a static version of minimize, I think, <laughs> uh, that you can just provide a parameter to. Why the difference? Because minimize just requires one parameter, and if you want to use it like exclusively, without doing anything else, and there's only one parameter to specify, you might as well. Okay. However, usually you would set that object. Uh, and if it's not an object, you fucked up. And here's an error that you would get. Yes, you can actually throw your own errors. So if you try to specify anything else but an object, to the first parameter, which is uh, this. So you specify a string, it gives you this error. Uh, let's try it, I guess. Yep, specify an object. You specified string. Amazing. Specifically, params object in new of the win class. So there is uh, less way for you to fuck things up. I used three errors in total. 
for three different occasions. And now this. I understand that it's a bit of a whack method. I do. But it is what it is. <laughs> okay, what actually happens here? So we provide an object. Let's go to something like VS Code and move it right. So what's happening here? Uh, win title is the key. Exapath is also a key. So we take that key and use double deref uh, to assign to it. So here we specified win title. So this this becomes win title is value, and value is this. So I'm using double deref to not have to have any parameters because what you have in this object becomes a field. One thing to consider, if you misspell uh, something, like if you misspell a field that you tried to assign, well, you wouldn't know, you wouldn't get an error, because all this does is uh, create a new field called WinTile... What? WinTile, yeah. Creates a new field WinTile set to whatever you set it to. And uh, I'm not sure how you're gonna figure out that. So this idea has issues, I understand. However, it's much easier to maintain, in my opinion. Uh, there could be more try catches and so on. But I didn't bother. The state that the win class is currently in, I quite like. Uh, and then the same thing happens with exapath or whatever else you specify. Uh, exapath turns to the actual field, here it is, and it sets this field to whatever the value is. Great. The other disadvantage with this approach is the fact that you actually have to know all of the parameters by name. I know it's kind of ridiculous, and it is. I don't really have a counterpoint to that, it's kind of ridiculous. But compared to what it was before, I still like it a lot more. If you're interested in how it looked before, uh, you can go ahead and go to my GitHub account, uh, go to lib-v2 and then win.hk. Scroll through commits and then you'll see what a clusterfuck it was before. Uh, let's see how much time we have. Okay, we are going to cover testing um, and that will be the end uh, of this episode of this series. So technically this throw type error and so on should be also in testing. There's not really a reason for it to not be. But essentially I am hiding the throw target error and everything else inside of a class. So if I wanted to change the message or anything else, I only had to do it here in one place rather than trying to search where I actually threw the error. So once again, uh, making the code drier. A quick explanation of how throwing errors work. So first you, will, you use the keyword throw, then the class of an error that you want to throw. They don't really matter that much, but still, it's probably going to be easier for readability if you throw more or less the correct error. Uh, so let's see. Here they are. Here are the available error types, which are in a auto hotkey by default. And you can throw them. I think all of them have the same parameters.
So there I threw target error. So throw target error, specify a file path. This, this is what it will say on the top. Minus one is what you always specify. What does it mean? It means the last place in the call stack. And then the third parameter is what is in the specifically thing. So let's try to generate an error so you can see that for yourself. Sure, let's specify something aside from an object here. So, uh, hold on, like this, yeah. So this is the first parameter as it is, minus one is uh, is the line where we called that. This is the last place in the call stack and you can actually see the call stack here. So first, uh, yeah, basically it goes, yep, mm -hmm, uh-huh. And by providing minus one, you have more or less the surewire way to point to the correct call. And that's where we are. And the third parameter is specifically. So that's how you throw errors. I don't quite see any reason to, but you can actually create your own error types. Once again, not sure what the advantage would be, but you can. I haven't tried though, so not sure exactly how. Another thing to consider, this is a class inside of another class. This class is static, essentially. What this means is we won't be able to access testing well, it says we can, but we actually can't, uh, like this. We have to access testing through the static uh, class of the parent class. So this works, and then you do, I'm not even sure what it has, this. But this wouldn't work. And this applies to all the nested classes. So this is a nested class and nested classes and child classes are completely different things. Don't confuse them. Good? Good. Uh, so because of that, these methods are also static. So you can call them like this. Perfect. And I use these two errors where? Well, you're gonna see in the next episode of the series. If you're interested, subscribe, leave a like, type some comment, and have a good day. Goodbye!